Why does it matter if everyone believes that evolution is true if this life is all there is? Why does it matter why if... Why is it important? What? Why is it important to accept the truth of evolution? Um, so do you think that as the world, as humanity collectively becomes less and less arrogant, we also become more egalitarian, less violent, more accepting, uh, that we live longer lives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? I'm not sure what your question is pertaining to or how it's an answer to what I asked. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how egalitarian relates to why it would be important to believe in evolution. Because when human, so it's not, it's not specifically evolution, it's everything, which would include evolution. So uh, after humanity escaped the, the ignorance of like the dark ages, for example, and the scientific revolution ushered in very quickly after that, we got to the industrial revolution and the enlightenment. And I don't think that those are coincidences in any way. And again, if you look around the world, um, the better educated people are, the longer they live, the richer they are, the healthier they are, the less war they're embroiled in, the less tribal they are, the more egalitarian they are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, ignorance, ignorance is a recipe for just like absolute disaster and catastrophe because ignorance is used by people to control other people to make themselves, the people in power, out to be demagogues who have the answers for everything, and they have answers that can't be questioned, and it stifles human progress, and it leads people into uh, the worst state of existence. Why does any of that matter if there's nothing beyond this life? Because if life is the only thing there is, then it's the only thing that even could matter. If I thought I, I was going to, if I, if I thought I was going to live again forever, uh, after I die, I would just die right now. Life would be utterly pointless. I suppose that's one way of looking at it, or it's the only logical way to look at it. If you ask me, I don't know. I feel like it's logical to say that those pursuits don't really matter if nothing is beyond this life. And the only thing that would be truly a worthwhile pursuit is your own pleasure the only thing worth uh doing in life would be dying if there's going to be this other life that goes on forever no, no 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 i'm saying if you're right about there being nothing else the only thing that would make sense wouldn't necessarily be to make life better for all of humanity but specifically for yourself you know, the whole Darwinian survival of the fittest and things like that. Right. <clears throat> the problem is if everybody does what's best for themselves, then nobody gets what they want. Mm, some people do. The strongest ones do. Uh, sometimes they, they do. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I don't see why we would ignore deeper human meaning that actually pulls us outside of ourselves and call that ignorance. I didn't say that people believing in God is ignorance. What I was talking about is uh, not knowing scientific facts. That's the ignorance I was talking about. Because you asked me, why does it matter that people believe in evolution? I think the world is a better place than when people thought the sun orbited the earth and that men and women weren't equal and that God created different colors of people differently for different purposes and some were better than others. And uh, that there's no such thing as germs and all that kind of stuff. The person who discovered germ theory was actually a devout Christian. Actually, most yeah, of the... Ignaz I know. His Christianity had nothing to do with it. He was also a guy. You may as well say his wiener discovered it. Um, kind there's of. There's nothing about his Christianity that had anything to do with it. 
actually it was the pursuit of truth and the desire to know God better that pushed. Okay, well, I claim that his scientists. dick made him do that. If we're just gonna, if we're just gonna do, I don't, I don't know. This is like some kind of weird form of identity politics. You're gonna pick religion. I'm gonna pick his gender and say that uh, that's just what people with wings do, man. Wieners, wieners guide the 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 men to scientific truths. Think about it. Einstein had a wiener. Ignaz Semmelweis, that dude totally had a wiener, right? Isaac Newton, Madden guy had a wiener, wiener, right? That's that's actually what it is. It has nothing to do with Christianity. Mm, Madame Curie. Uh, if you think she had a wiener, then I no, don't know I'm saying weird. that that would obviously be an exception. Oh, okay. Are there exceptions to uh, the Christians? Uh, yeah, something like 25% of all Nobel Prizes have been won by Jews, for example. And Jews worship the same God that Christians do, although they leave out a huge piece of what that is. But let's go back specifically to evolution. Okay. How do you explain things like the Goldilocks principles? Earth being in the Goldilocks zone? Well, that <clears throat> and the Goldilocks zone as compared to the sun as and our solar system as compared to the center of the galaxy as well as the tilt of the Earth. All of those things. So Earth isn't... The Goldilocks zone on Earth is enormous. Earth, Earth could be as far away as Mars is and life would still be... Uh, thriving on earth well would it be the same it would be dramatically different possibly that's not really the point though but i'm not just talking about exactly where in the solar system we are i'm also talking about the mass of earth because the mass of earth and mars are different enough that it's atmosphere is completely different right well mars it lost have its liquid water. mars lost its magnetic field so there so there are there are probably 200 billion stars just in this galaxy and there are probably 5 or 10 times more planets than stars so like the idea that earth is the only kind of planet where organisms like us could exist on is really preposterous and there's probably 400 billion galaxies in the observable universe i mean you're asking a statistics question there and so then i think it's more of other things sorry. where i think it's i think it's more of selection bias so have you heard of easter island I've heard of Easter Island, but I'm trying to make a specific point here is that there's a lot of layered things that make carbon based life on Earth possible. One yeah. is our placement in the solar system. One is the solar system's placement in the galaxy. And then there's the magnetic field. There's the presence of water and other elements. Well, water obviously is an element, element, but liquid water and certain elements um, in their pure forms. There's a ton of cascading things that you need to have happen. And then there's also how much time it would actually take for something to actually spark into existence. And then that single cell has to divide and become something else and become something else. And we're talking about a cascading amount of events to rely on some level of probability, right? Sure. <clears throat> are you like, are you talking about life? Or are you talking about intelligent life, or or what? Any life, the existence of any life. Are you aware of what a statistical impossibility is? Uh, no. Okay. Something so with the odds of zero is a statistical impossibility. I mean, if that's what you meant. 
Well, not exactly. Like, I mean, obviously, we're talking about if something has odds of zero, yes, it's impossible. But when we're talking about a statistical impossibility, we're talking about something being so incredibly rare that you would have to have things happen exactly perfectly on multiple levels for it to happen. And um, evolution, the I origin don't, I, don't, I, I really is a statistical impossibility. No, it's not. I, I don't agree with that at all because life sure adapts to the life just... adapts to the conditions it's given. The the ranges of temperatures and pressures and concentrations of oxygen and any but number of things on, on Earth where life thrives in are so varied that it's insane. I mean, we find we find living things buried over a kilometer into the ocean crust. Like in basically solid rock, we still find living yeah, things in there. Still on this planet. Are you aware of the one of yeah, the experiments but, that proved? Yes, but theory? when you're talking about all these things that must happen, life existing on the bottom of the ocean means that it, it doesn't even need sunlight, right? So a planet that doesn't even have a star could get life on it. In theory but again it still has to start existing from nothing right or no, from not whatever nothing. happens life is made of atoms and molecules uh that exist on our planet there's no nothing that it, it definitely doesn't start from nothing well you're talking about organic coming from inorganic has that ever happened since the origin of species on the planet um we have no idea it doesn't really seem like it. It could have happened a few times, but uh, different, different, slightly different versions of life would have been outcompeted to extinction. All right. Have we ever so, reproduced that in a lab? Nope. No. So it's not. Origin of species is definitely not observable. You, the, the past is not observable. Um, but we can still gather evidence in the present of what happened in the past or analyze um, what's going on in the present to try to get some scientific models about what may have happened at different points in Earth's history. But why would inorganic matter somehow accidentally becoming organic be the Not by most... Accident. Not by accident? Chemical reactions don't happen on accident. They happen for specific reasons. Like at atoms and molecules interact with each other and chemically react in order to try to achieve a lower energy state. So what is the exact chemical reaction that has to happen to create life from the ingredients that make it up? It certainly wouldn't be one chemical reaction. It would be many. Sure, but you would think that with all this time on our hands and all of this gifted We didn't even science, know what DNA's function was until 1953. Okay, but now we do. Why can't we figure out how to get those chemicals to react with each other? We haven't done it yet, um, but that doesn't mean that it can't be done. I don't know. It's it just seems like if something like that could happen on its own, that it would keep happening and we'd have different strains of evolutionary um, starting points all along the way. Um. So again, it's possible that that happened early on, but the other slightly different forms of life got outcompeted. Maybe life is like a, a really, <clears throat> a really rare thing. But <clears throat> I mean, again, if th this galaxy has hundreds of billions of stars and probably ten times as many planets, and there are hundreds of billions of galaxies, I mean, the odds that somewhere something alive exists. Uh, other than here seems extraordinarily high to me. 
Well, it would be I, there's nothing if it was high, but there's a ton of statistical evidence, and I would encourage you to read the book um, "Is Atheism Dead?" by Eric Metaxas, because um, he outlines a lot more of the Goldilocks principles, and I think that you know about, which are extremely interesting. Um, there's a ton of stuff that we're missing here, and I wish I had the book in front of me. It's incredible the amount of things that have to be exactly right for life as we understand it to exist. Yeah, as we understand it. I mean, life life well, could be different, sure, but, but, but again, also, a lot about the range... What oh, is. sorry. What's that? I know a lot about what life is. Biology is probably one of the most studied fields because we have questions. We want to understand what we are and what the planet is. Right? I mean, obviously, I hope that the questions and the kind of dialogue that I'm giving says that I'm at least educated enough to have this kind of discourse. No, I, I never thought you were dumb or anything like that. Well, good. I would not consider myself <laughs> dumb either. I wouldn't consider you dumb. I do disagree with the conclusions based on how I understand the evidence. But to me, well, let's just, do you wear watches or use any kind of high tech Items such as a phone um, or something like that. Oh, I see you're wearing a watch right now. Hold on, I'm thinking. No. No what? <laughs> so are you going to say that a watch clearly has a designer? Well, it clearly does, but that's not what I was going to say. Okay. How long would you have to stick all the parts of a watch in a box and shake it up until something came together. Not even just the whole watch, but two of the components fit together correctly. Probably a while. Probably. I feel like it just makes more sense for something, even if it's not God, to at least help the process along with all of the different components that life has. Um, sure. So, I mean, I don't think living things are anywhere near as uh, well-made as watches are. Really? Have you ever dissected an animal or a human? I've dissected several animals. So, like, like you know, you look at, you look at a diagram of, like, the, the, the eye, and it looks, in the textbook, it looks so, like, neatly put together. But if you've ever, like, actually dissected that part of an animal and you look at it, it's just, it's, it's an insane mess. Um, okay. com like complexity is not a good element of design. It's in fact, what evolution does because evolution can't redesign things. It can only modify pre-existing structures. That's why we end up with these structures that when you actually look at them, look just it, insanely weird and complex and, and cramped and inefficient because evolution has no choice. Um, we, I mean, we know, like, <clears throat> there are all kinds of things about us that we can improve, right? Um, so I don't, I don't think that there's really that strong of an element of design in us. Well, as far as the eye goes, one, no one has been able to reproduce a camera that sees as well as the eyes do. Yes, yes, we have. Not in the same way, no. What camera does the job as well as the eyes do? <laughs> what what person can zoom in on anything? Okay, but it's not actually seeing the image better. It's zooming in, but that's a different function altogether. Um, if I had a, if I took a, I, I really don't agree with that. I mean, I could, I could not zoom in, take a picture of something and then 
uh, afterwards zoom in on the information there and read something. I guess that maybe that's not a good comparison for eyes because you can't take a snapshot of your consciousness and zoom in on it. Um, but our eyes literally have blind spots in them. Our brain just ignores them and, and hallucinates what is supposed to be there. Or Excuse me. fills in the blanks because it's intelligent. Um, I would, so, how do I put this? And you're seeing I would say the brain, the, you're, you're saying that compensation is intelligence, and I don't, I don't really agree with that. I'm saying that having a system that works together to make it work well is good design. But we can move on from the eyes if that doesn't make sense. So what yeah, would... I was trying to respond to, oh great, now this is happening. Um, so time out, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got it, I gotta get my filter back. Okay, um, yeah, so I just don't think that, like, if the, if we can improve on the design of the eye, and so therefore, I don't think that that's really, I think that sort of nullifies the idea that it is designed. I mean, the fact that the retina is inside out, we have blind spots, huge numbers of people are myopic or have uh, farsightedness, I don't know what the word for that is. Um, I don't think these are good elements of of design personally. Somebody asked what sees the brain or the eyes, the, the vertebrate eyes are actually outgrowths of our brain. So your eye is technically part of your brain, right? I think part of what you're saying, I understand because there's definitely things that go wrong with function. And I'm not going to disagree with that. But then that goes into the theological question of well, why does that happen? And since we're trying, I'm trying not to go with that premise. I, I would have an answer as to why things don't function as they're supposed to, but you'd have an argument against that because we're not even arguing from the same place. So I do think that there are things that can be improved about the human body. Personally, I think that the degradation due to thousands of years of less than ideal circumstances and the natural separation from the designer is what makes it less less functional i think that it was better at creation and i do believe in creation i feel like it makes much more mathematical sense than evolution does mathematical sense just the amount of distinct events that have to happen in order for the diversity of life and the function of life to happen just is completely mind boggling to me. And I don't think that it's possible. Unless I don't think, I mean, evolution, I suppose could theoretically be possible if someone was steering it but I don't think that it makes sense to do that. If you could just design it whole in one piece. Okay. I mean, that's, that's not much of an answer though. It's, I mean, it's a claim, but other than that, like just saying, just like just saying that I can't understand how it would have happened without God gives the God hypothesis credence, that's called an argument from ignorance. Well, I suppose you could put it that way. However, there's, I teach math and I taught statistics. Each individual event of evolution to get to the point where we are now has an individual statistical um, value where it's, you know, such and such a chance of this happening out of this many. So like if there was a one in a thousand chance of the right chemical reactions happening at the right 
chime for the origin of species. Okay, there's one in a thousand, but then there has to be one in a thousand that it continues to live. And what's it eating? There's so many individual things that have to happen that it becomes so unlikely. So to me, that argument completely negates the fact that there are countless different ways in which living things can go about living, right? We have, we have biodiversity on planet earth. So if you look at, if you look at life in its current form, you could say, this is a slightly different argument. Now, if you look at life in its current form, life as it exists on earth could only have popped up in its current state in probably one way, which is the way things happened. But if the conditions were different, then living things would have just evolved along different pathways. And so life would look slightly different on our planet. I mean, there's endless different ways in which organisms can survive and be successful, which is why there are thousands of different species of all kinds of different things like, like bees and beetles and fishes and whatever else is out there. True, but there are some things that are common to all of those things that have to work the way that they do or life ceases to exist. Life usually ceases to exist. Most things that have ever lived are extinct. You still need an organism to function. You still need certain cellular processes to happen. And they need to happen perfectly for that organism to perfectly. exist. Perfectly? No, they don't. Well, what, they, find, what, name one living organism that's perfect. Okay, let me define perfectly in this sense. You need things to work well enough for it to get the fuel that it needs into the cell and for it to keep going and reproducing. Yeah, evolution's all about good enough. Look, if life was if life was designed by some intelligent designer, um, an, an intelligent designer that knows the future, then the idea that anything would go extinct is preposterous. This is precisely why in the 1800s, when fossil, when extinct organisms were being dug up and described, uh, it caused a massive, massive theological problem for Christianity because they couldn't understand how it could be possible that things that nobody ever saw, multitudes of them, existed and went extinct. I don't know that it really is a theological problem, but... It, it certainly was to them. I mean, you've grown well, up your whole sure. life where where this this particular debate and this particular issue ran its entire course and is no longer talked about at all except for like lunatics like Ken Ham and Kent Hovind. But this was like an extreme problem at one point. Well, I think that that largely is because of the assumptions that you seem to be fun functioning off of with what creationists actually teach and believe where things are designed perfect and they stayed that way, which isn't the stance of any good faith creationist because the idea is that things started well and quickly went downhill as soon as it got screwed up by humanity's choices so one thing i do agree so with some chick eating a fruit climate. is the reason why dinosaurs went extinct that's your that's your theory. I think that that opens up a, a larger discussion where it's not really specifically Eve eating the fruit, but the things that happened after that that were the biggest issue, but continuous bad choices because like what? What did pterosaurs do 
What bad choices did pterosaurs make that made no, no, them no, go not extinct? Not pterosaurs. Humans. Humans have made bad choices. I mean, I believe that we do impact the climate. So it's what happened that thousands of years were... ago that made pterosaurs and dimetrodon and gorgonopsids and eustemosuchus and dunkleosteus and megalodon and etc go extinct personally well not personally but a large part of us um zach has broke the ninth commandment he said he teaches math he doesn't okay sure i actually do but okay getting back on my turn i thought i think it was the flood I think it was a worldwide flood that. So there was supposed of... to be two of every animal on that ark. So I, how does this possibly have anything to do with extinction? The after effects of the flood. A lot of the vegetation things didn't grow back properly, and there wasn't the amount of living things on the earth so it would be difficult for a lot of those species to get enough food then why did any of them live i don't know um arashika i don't teach in public schools i teach privately and i have a private license cool <laughs> in any case do you think that it's wise for humans to uh add to the bible things that it doesn't say i think if you're teaching it specifically as fact that's a problem um i think that theorizing and asking questions is fine but not if you're teaching it as theology. Oh, because so I'm looking here and I'm reading Genesis. I'm on Genesis 8 now. At no point does it ever say, um, after the waters receded, there were problems, and that's why dinosaurs went extinct. The Bible also doesn't include every single solitary detail that happened in all of history. I don't know why it would specifically talk about that if it's not theologically relevant. I don't know why you've said it if it's not theologically relevant. Well, we're not arguing theology. Then why are I was you talking using about a the personal Bible theory based on based on the fossil record and the the fossil record the fossil record doesn't support a global flood i've read things that um say it does well you've read things from charlatans and ignoramuses way like in the 17 and 1800s people knew that there were episodes of earth's history where life was completely different from the life of today and it went through multiple, multiple different stages. That's where all those words like Triassic, Cretaceous, Jurassic, Permian, Devonian, those are, those are, those terms are hundreds of years old. Cause you never find, like, if you want to, if you want to mummify the theory of evolution and the idea that earth is ancient, all you gotta do is find a rabbit and a T-Rex buried together or a T-Rex and a trilobite buried together or what are they called? A pla a, or a placoderm, a placoderm record. and a ginkgo tree next together. That would do it, but it's never happened. Trilobites are all through the fossil record. No, they are in multiple parts of it because they were around for a very long time, but they went extinct 250 million years ago. You will not find there trilobites. We have millions of dinosaur of fossils. We have tens of millions of trilobites. Footprints. Dinosaurs oh, and trilobites have never been found together. You don't even find trilobites and... Uh, I was going to say... A trilobite fossil was found in a human footprint. Oh, God. Yeah, whoever told you to that either made it up I or they the don't picture. know anything. 
great. I've seen people people think that have sent me pictures too. It doesn't make it true. Well, frankly, I have a little bit of a headache, and I have plenty to do tomorrow to prepare for finals. Um, either way, if you're right, none of this really matters anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. 